and go, uh, go. Okay, uh, so um, so I have a small list of issues that um, um, that probably require some discussion. Um, <laughs> it's possible that for uh, some of them we'll just um, you know we'll go through them very quickly. Um, for the preload uh, ones, um, yeah, um, can you try to, uh, yeah, what we want more and I just want to say I'll drop by. Okay, cool. So we yeah, that's specified. Yeah, yeah. But, but but we'll keep that uh, those issues. Uh, to cool. Um, okay. Um, so the first uh, issue, which is well, it doesn't need a whole lot of discussion, uh, but uh, and I have a PR for it. Basically, we're aligning uh, tau processing with cores to make sure that tau is a strict subset of cores. This doesn't yet uh, mean that um, we'll allow, we'll, we'll assume that timing is allowed when cores is allowed. Uh, that would be a step after that. That will probably be an L3 step. But uh, initially, we just want to align the definition so that if we have equivalent timing allow origin headers and uh, cores um, access control allow origin headers, if we won't have situations where timing is allowed, but cores isn't. And right now, with some redirect sandwiches, there is. Uh, so this is an issue. There's a PR. There's a Chromium CL uh, waiting for Nicholas. And we can probably move on unless someone has. And so web platform test. test. The, the web platform tests are a part of the CL. Great. I have a question about something you mentioned here and also earlier, um, and that's the intent in the future to have cores headers in fly count. Yes. Um, um, why, that's, why do we think that's okay? Um, because if it's a cross origin resource that is where the response is not opaque, you can fetch the response and inspect the content. And um, so the timing doesn't give any more information more than that, if that makes sense. The only piece of information that it does is the cacheability. Um, like, there is some information regarding cacheability, depending on which privacy person you're talking to, may or may not be relevant. Um, so, that, but this is. Um, I think it could expose some more information, but does it actually really expose things like have you logged in and other have you visited? Yeah, so, you so, 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 yes. The thing about cacheability is that there are multiple privacy and security folks who say that it, this is already exposed regardless of how or cores just with various uh, timing related. I, I don't attacks. think that all vendors will just accept those multiple privacy people. Uh, that's possible. And I, so I don't <laughs> think we need to litigate this now. I think yeah. this change yeah. is so something that we probably want to do anyway. Um, regarding the cacheability exposure, maybe it's okay. Maybe we can limp, I don't know, add some limits around that, but expose most other things. So, you know, just block cacheability exposure if cores is allowed, but how is it? But I don't know. We can, we can debate it in the future, but yeah, that's that's where we want to go because 
uh, cores is enabled on way more uh, resources than timing allowed origin. And the assumption is that people do that yeah. with, yeah. Um, with the right reasons. And I know that you have a goal of expanding use of this stuff and stuff. But, and uh, expand, expanding visibility into a new resource. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that it won't be just a hand wavy and it goes in this back. Mm. I think there will be some resistance there. Um, I'm, I will welcome resistance and not resistance, but you know, yeah. uh, constructive feedback as to what this exposed beyond cores. And if there are things that need to be you know, block in those cases, we can definitely do that. Yeah, and, and to be clear, there has already been discussion before about this, right? There's, so, yes. And we did agree that there needs to be security slash privacy review to make sure that it doesn't enable any attack scenarios, as your comment on November 28th. Mm -hmm. okay. So we should just start that review. I don't know how that. Okay, oh, uh, so kick off the review of that specific. Uh, yeah, we can probably open a specific issue for that uh, on level three, and then there we'll is start. An issue to, for it. There is an issue for and it. Okay, um, and, and so I think the key point that we're making is that it's not a slam dunk yeah. to many people in the room that it is the right thing to switch effectively to cores as allowing tap. Uh, that ensuring that is a clean, non-privacy leaking. The, so yeah, the fine check. Like, I think in, ensuring that is not going to leak information is is what we want to happen to make that change. It's not the opposite where we're going to make the change and it's on the people to then. Of course. Uh, the question is like, are there people who argue against the value of that kind of change? Assuming that it's safe, or assuming we'll follow oh, Yeah, does. if it were safe, then okay. that'd be great. Cool. <laughs> so let's make it safe. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> just a quick question about that. I want to make sure that I heard correctly what we're doing here. This is to make tau a subset of cores. The other concern that we have, which I don't disagree with you on that we should actually look at it and not accept people at their word is that in certain cases we may add into parts of the spec that if cores such and such and such, then that implies tau in certain cases where we explicitly said it and we don't think, and there may be a problem with that, we don't know, but we have to get someone to look at it. Those are two separate, those are down the line when we when and if we write a spec that contains that language, yes. none of that language is existing at this point. Right. Yes. Got it. That's future work. Got yeah. it. Yeah. I thought that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Future work that, 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 that doesn't block right. Oh, I think this is exactly. Right, this is this is effectively current privacy security work. Right. This right. Exactly. cleans up holes. Yes. This is this is spec versus yeah. 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 This is. I think this should absolutely be. True. I don't see any resides. I just wanted to make sure I was following correctly. Um, Thank you. Okay. Cool. Uh, so with that and with Mr. Nottingham in the room, hey, uh, maybe we can start off with talking about preload. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so we have three uh, preload related issues that touch on the HTTP working group that Mark Nyman is chairing and seem worthwhile to discuss in like as a high level overview. So one issue is Link preload headers right now are being used uh, to imply push semantics and are being used by servers to perform H2 push. And we have a request from, I believe, uh, HLS folks from Apple um, and Akamai um, to add uh, new attributes on that head, like on link preload headers that will imply that only a certain HTTP range needs to be pushed. Uh, it's unclear what, 
how will this impact the processing model in the browser, if at all? Uh, and if it won't, and servers will not remove those range requests, then this will likely result in performance degradations because like, the server will push a range, but then the browser will request the full, um, the full resource. At the same time, if it will impact the browser processing model, then we will need to actually specify how preload now can do range requests, which will be a bit tricky. Our preload, uh, do browsers currently respect preload on fetch requests? Mm. If a response contains a link, it's yeah. a preload, will it, will it, you know, and, and it's originated from fetch? Yeah. OK. Yes. Um, so, the, so we had some discussion on the issue. Um, uh, it was suggested by, I think, uh, yeah, Lucas, that maybe the solution here is to split the semantics. Yeah. And we discussed that a while back, and it fell one way. Yeah. I think it's perfectly reasonable to re revisit that. I that. think what you need to do is get the implementers who are using those semantics in the server side, which are, you know, it's, I think it's Apache and, and Kazoo Hub with H2O and probably a couple other folks and get them to agree to a transition plan. Um, okay. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, you know the use case they have from the HLS stuff. The yes. stuff. Like the, the use case is legitimate. It is. I mean, there there are other questions about their semantics of how you you know push and preload things and priorities as well, and that's all kind of a big hairy mess. Yes. But what they want to do is somewhat reasonable. Um, definitely. Uh, I think I think if, if another link relation were defined, then they could define these events for that link relation, and you immediately get support for it because people want to support that. They're, they're being pushed for. It. Yeah, and and the link relation in question shouldn't have a browser processing exactly. model, and then you can do whatever you want on the server side. And then it's just a question of. of what kind of schedule do you deprecate the semantic cell preload on the edge on yeah. the Um Okay, so. I guess the question is does this working group want to specify that link relation? Or I guess people here are probably less interested in other people. Okay. I think that if it has no browser crossing model, there's so, no point in it. Why don't I take an action to bring that up then? Are you coming to Singapore? I'm really, really hoping not to. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know really good bars. I, I am sure. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, it's just like travel wise, it will be. Um, there, like, I ha I'm in California all the previous week till Saturday. So. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm hoping not to. Uh, so, but I, I don't could. think we need you there. Um. <laughs> oh, wow! Not only was it so, it was like <laughs> you were my yeah. drinking buddy. That's now that's what is you? You? What's wrong with that? That's gonna be on YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I I think we can try maybe to schedule so like an online meeting uh, before that, and then I can remote to whatever it is that I, mean, I need in to reality, remote this to. Is like a two page draft. It's not like yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, I'm just uh, Roger from Apple. I believe wasn't very excited about Pentos. that. Hmm? Pentos? I think yeah, Roger on GitHub, but yeah, I see that. Why? Why was he? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Um, is this more work, or does he think that he has to do the work? Uh, I don't know, but it's see. worthwhile to talk and. Give me a minute. I'll ask because I, I I can ask Kazuko and I can ask Stephen uh, Stefan uh, I say and that would be H two O and Apache, which is a good start. And then if Lucas is on board as well, then yeah, then he'll feed that back into Cloud Foundry, I mean, maybe inject. So. Um, yeah, and do next have native support or is that a cloud? I don't know. If they do, he can yeah. understand the yeah. 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 Okay. And your next word, preload. Um, yeah. I don't think so. But okay. Cool. Um, so you're taking an action item to schedule something? Mark? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, Another uh, related one is interaction of 103 and CSV, uh, which seems like there are. It's 103, I think. 103 is a server side thing, it is not a browser thing. I am not aware of any implementations that are trying to make it a thing. I don't like um, mean browser, implementation. hmm? browser implementations. I'm not aware of any. I know that there was some interest, but the complexity um, discouraged people from going down that path. Can you remind me why this is specific to preload that? Um, that's exactly my problem because it's not specific to preload. Uh, the reason it's here because our like because all the examples for 103 are for preloads. So this is not a preload issue, uh, which is something that I said along the line and then sent Anna and Casperin to talk to the ITF folks, which then said it is a preload issue and sent him back and I'm. Not like I don't want to, you know, ping pong in too much. So, are any browsers playing on that 103 yet? Because until they do, I mean, it'd be great if somebody did, but until they do, we can another take another push. I'm just going to say nothing. I, I don't know. I have an amazing use case. I'm sure you do. We should talk about that. No, no, no. Really? really, for our origin policy, we'll be enabled. By oh, sure. Push. Actually, so the interesting cases for for push are always not about web content. It's about metadata. It's about other stuff. Yeah, I agree. That's a great use case. Yeah. Um. So keep it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So basically, I'm not sure what to do with this issue. Um, I'm just maybe don't close it. Don't close it. But park it until there's actual interest. Like it's, it's not worth the work. Yeah, until there is implementer interest. Okay. So I added a non-blocking <laughs> label a year ago. Uh, <laughs> oh, so can, blocking. Yeah. It's so, effectively in the like future because it's not a tied to a plan yeah. specification. Yeah. And similarly, uh, there's an M not here uh, that oh, yeah. wanted urgency hints. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Um, can we close it? it? <laughs> <laughs> or should I keep it open and then you'll keep H2 Bush alive? Just like, uh, very often. Well, I think this, if, if we're going to split off the semantics of, you know, yeah, that will go there. They will go there. Yeah. Unless, you know, you want to add more <coughs> granularity to what preloading means, but it doesn't sound like we do. Not really, no. I mean, there is the priority hints proposal that is yeah. a different take on the same problem, yeah. uh, which isn't currently shipping anywhere because um, effectively, we didn't see it being very effective. The suspicion is that it's due to H2 server prioritization implementations. So maybe once we'll have a better prioritization scheme for H3, uh, 
then we can prove that priority hands is actually worthwhile, but for now it hasn't shipped yet. No, so, no, okay, yeah. yeah. This feels like we could close it at this particular. I think you can probably close this. Yeah. Okay. Um, we can reopen it if it becomes a thing. Yeah. I think if, once we have our draft, the, the question we'll have is do we want to include this? Can, can I just, um, what, what issue number is that again? Because uh, six, six. Six. I probably want to reload the state on that when we get to that stack. Okay. Cool. Um, Kazuko just got back to me. He said he's fine with a separate kind of relation. Okay. So cool. that's that's one. That's easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I think Stefan as well. So, um, yeah, we'll write that out. I guess there was something else. Oh, um, it might be that the Pentos was unhappy because he actually wants browsers to only preload. The range. range, yeah. Which, you know, because um, the, what they're doing, he doesn't want to compete. You know, he doesn't want to probably. I'm speculating, but I would suspect he doesn't want to load an entire segment. He just wants to get the first part of the segment queued up so that you know, he's got something above her. Yeah, but if he's pushing that range, then but preload the, the push isn't happening. It's like a fallback almost. You know, I don't know. Okay, I mean. Um, I need to learn a lot more about what they're doing in, in the little NC stuff already. That could, that could be what they're trying to do. So, at least if he wants range requests on preloads, that potentially is like, it seems like a legitimate use case, but it wasn't phrased as such. Okay. Um, <coughs> I mean, if you can preload, like if you can issue fetch with range requests, you should similarly be able to yeah, do preload. Um, but I would love to hear from him if this is indeed the case and they really want, like they want preload support on top of yeah. the push one. Okay, I might, I might ask him the issue then. Okay, follow up there. Cool. Um, and I think that this is it for um, preload, other than the big and scary issue that we talked about earlier about the preload, like the definition of the preload patch. Um, which, <coughs> Okay, cool. Um, and now, navigation timing. So we have two recent issues uh, from Boris. Um, that, um, yeah, that we need to work through. Um, basically, the first one is that the current um, navigation time, like the current definition of type is referring to the current browsing context, which is not something that's well defined. And it doesn't behave Basically, I I don't know. Like, do you do you have a good grasp of uh, this test case or no? Okay. No, I do. I mean, the issue is exactly what he says: is that the, the browsing context is not entirely well defined. It seems to be a question of depending on where the execution ultimately takes place yeah. versus where it's defined, I believe is the issue that he was highlighting here. Yeah, I believe so as well. I'm not 100% sure why this test case should produce one and one um, according to the current spec, but I'm basically trusting that 
uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So we should probably uh, hang it off of the document. Yeah. Uh, in which case, we will need to move uh, the. Like, I th I'm pretty sure we'll need to move the definition of type the enum into HTML itself, and then uh, define it there. Yeah. Does that like? Are everyone cool with that? Yeah. Um, and then there is another issue of the definition of, let me just uh, relabel this as, oh, I'm, Um, yeah, this one I remember much, much better. Okay, so do you want to talk about it? No. Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> basically, what we're seeing here is the back forward navigation type, the navigation entry happens, or basically you do a history traversal operation 100% of the time. According to the spec, yeah. If you follow all of this, you go through that all the time. And I think that he's. I think that ultimately, what I agree with him on was his second paragraph. I'm sorry, his one, two, third paragraph is that. We probably wanted to say back forward if it's traverse the history by a delta, yeah. not just traverse the history. Um, now, he raises another point about 300s. Um, and I don't know what we should do with that. That seems like more of an open question. But I do think it should be traverse the history by a delta. Okay, that, that part seems. Because the because if we traverse this through my delta and say that that will at least get us out of the loop where we're always doing a history traversal. Yeah. Um, so I agree that the traverse history by delta seems reasonable, uh, and then. Um, I'm not sure that I, like the redirect question. If we are, um, going back and then being redirected, are redirects currently part of the stack in, that's, you mean in the history? In history. Um, <clears throat> Are redirects added to the stack, or are they? Does anyone know, or not? I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. So this basically. Don't think they are. Um. Redirects as in three hundred one. Three hundred one, three hundred two. To the history side. Yeah. No. They're not. Okay. Okay. Um, we could probably look that up, couldn't we? In, we could just try. Well, yeah, assuming one of the browsers that we have here is standards compliant in that respect. So I don't understand why would redirects impact our decision to define this as back forward. I think. <clears throat> so. I think he's saying if we do a history load, if we do a traverse by delta, yeah. and we end up at a redirect as a result of that, and then we end up at yet a third page. That we've never seen because each redirect is different. Perhaps. What is that? Is that a history navigation? Or is that a new navigation? I believe that to be the question that he's asking. Yeah. Then there's the related question of what if instead of a redirect, HTTP redirect, you're doing and you just manually change the location of each row.
And that's the second thing that he writes. Because the location of a draft would not be the result of a. Uh, how is that different from a history stack perspective? I'm not saying that it is. I think that's just what he's asking you. He's saying, can we make sure we specify it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, on first glance, it feels like the location of that HRF set to something in the history. Is that a? I guess I don't even know. It feels like a history map, but is it's not? It's like a because that's because you're on a history chain already, right? Yeah, but if the so location of HRF will get. Oh, it's on, changing it to a, a new HREF that is no longer part of the history. Yeah, you're, you're basically going. So I went back a page, go back two pages or something. Yeah. And then, and then they navigate, and then they navigate elsewhere, either by location that HREF or 300. Yeah. That's where we are in this case. Right. So, so we are back in the history of Traverse by Delta, which would have been a back forward operation. But then, whatever we load at that point doesn't redirect. Mm -hmm. And the other place this actually impacts, or at least on the other, the link of, to the HTML issue is Service Worker, which also has a on the fetch request. Maybe I don't. I don't know how Service Worker gets the same state. The Service Worker is an object. What, what state? Well, he says he basically asked the question on the what WG. And says that this information is relevant for both service worker and the behavior of navigation time. Oh, okay. And there, but there's no. He doesn't say how it's there, relevant. It, yeah, there's no service worker issue. Right. I'm um, asking people in the room if they know because the navigation timing doesn't. It's harder for me to reason about navigation timing. The service worker. Say, did he open a separate issue for this on? Yeah. Uh, what the, the what WG forty eight hundred? Yeah. But it doesn't have a lot of context. Oh, I'm sorry. I I see the link. There. It is. I just didn't even see it. I thought it was yeah. That was something else. But so I'm asking the question because it feels to me that service worker would help us answer this question more clearly as to how we should spend it. So not that the people in service worker, but if yeah, we can reason so, through. Um, yeah, it, where it, we should is, have right? uh, an aligned response. Right. Um, at the same time, I think. The intention for navigation time and like why do we have type? <laughs> and I think the answer to that is to be able to distinguish different types of navigation that have different performance characteristics. And from that perspective, if it's a back forward navigation that then redirected to a brand new page that isn't in the BF cache. Then it shouldn't be a bad like right. the type should be different from that like from the use case lens. I think that's right. Um, but yeah, it would be. Yeah, I wonder how that impacts. Um, Do they have the? Do they have a history <coughs> navigation flag? Well, I'm, I don't know. That's why I'm. I don't think so. Yeah, because you're like. Should we just? Should we just ask him and take it? That sounds confused. like yeah. If you could, that'd yeah. be great. And okay, so. I think we can. So. I feel like this is like from Ma's last theorem. <laughs> I have a proof, but I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's too long. This is relevant to service workers. I'm not going to tell you how. So.
Is it for the is reload property? Um, there is an is reload on the fetch event. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the fetch event that sounds service worker has an is reload property that returns true if the event was dispatched by the user attempting to reload the page and false otherwise. Yeah, what but are that's you? a different like it's a different it's it is not, it, it's close. Uh, I yeah, what I'm are you on GitHub? Uh, I'm not, I'm on MDN. <laughs> so I am currently looking at fetch event. No, 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 I'm sorry. What like what's oh, your username on uh, Todd Rivestack? T O D D. Yeah, yeah, I'm right above yeah. that. <laughs> right above me. Or right above you also. Um, so it is not identical. However, when so if you are uh, loading a page that uh, is a, I, I don't even know how if you change location that HREF that triggers. Does that end up setting a new one? <coughs> Yeah. So if you have a redirect yeah. that ends up on a now on a brand new page that is reload can't be true because you've never yeah. Are you talking about response no, redirect on MDN? Don't think it's the same. No, it, because it's a, it's related because you also I believe have a reload type, but it's not. Um, this question is about back forward cache navigation, yep. right? Well, it's about you're in the back forward cache and then you leave the back forward cache. That's the core of the question. It's you started so, in the back forward cache, but then this back forward cache content sends you to a new location. So, are you still back forward? So, we have four navigation types we have navigate, we have reload, we have back forward, and the imaginary pre render, um, which we probably want to remove. So um, in the fetch event, there's a mode property um, that can be navigated. I've never seen it be back forward, but maybe that's because I'm using Chrome a lot. And, I, we don't and then we can open back forward. What's the, so what property? It's um, navig or it's event.request.mode, I think, mm. which can be navigated for a navigation request. Or back. And I guess it can be reloaded, but I've never seen it be reloaded. the flag. Right now, we need them. Right now, we need them. Yeah, oh, in the fetch event? No, yeah, what well, you thought was the related. Yeah. <laughs> but this looks like it's different. The request mode, it could be same origin, no core, course, and navigate. So that, yeah, no, that's, that yeah. No, that's uh, like that. Yeah, the course mode. Yeah. Not the. Um, okay, so I think we can wait for Boris's. Respond well if you can. Uh, yeah, I just want to. I saw something on MDN that is different than what's showing up in the spec. So, well, what did you see on MDN? On MDN, I saw. That's what I was trying to get you to. Yeah, I saw on fetch event there is an is reload. Got it. Adam would probably know as well, so we can try to grab him here somewhere and ask. Um, okay. It looks like Israel was removed from the spec at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't left MDN yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if there are discrepancies between MDN and the spec, I would trust the spec. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Let's... I posted that on the um, HTML. Oh, the HTML. Won't work. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. Cool. Um, and yeah, I. I think that if if possible, we probably want to define redirects as their own navigation rather than <coughs> yeah, because they didn't come from the backward cache. Right. Yeah. 
they may have started there, but ultimately yeah. the performance result that you're seeing is. Yeah. Would that also mean that a navigate that leads to a redirect would then turn from a navigate, which it is today, into a redirect as well? If there is no redirect. There's reload. There's a history navigation boolean on the request object, which might be what he's talking about. Oh, okay. And it looks like there's also an is reload navigation, which could be where it moved from the fetch event to the request object. Okay, so this and is also just getting is fit the answer might be easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah that's interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it seems like from a use case perspective, oh. we would always go to navigate instead of yeah, there's is, back forward. You were just saying is history navigation. Is that what you just said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is history navigation, is reload navigation. And in this case, if you're redirecting, it's clearly neither a reload nor history. So the it seems like the service worker answer is simple, theoretically. At least to get it's easier to answer because you know what the service worker wants to do, which is, hey, it's now being navigated to a completely new thing, therefore it should be false. Yeah. And navigation timing also should have semantically a thing that means it's... Yeah, I guess it slightly depends on what the use case is for this flag in service workers, but I'm assuming yeah. that it would align this, yeah, because it doesn't make sense otherwise. And so if we think that through then for navigation timing though, wouldn't it does mean that when this redirect happens, either you need a new enum, which we haven't yet defined, or it would go back to become a navigate, right? I think navigate would be right. Now, is there any way that I might see the performance object <laughs> before? A location dot yeah. In which case, that should be a back forward. Yeah. Yes. On the then, as itself. soon as yeah. you do the location dot That's a new navigation. Then it's a new navigation. It immediately goes to new navigation. Then. Right. So the, if I the get the new page that is the href is. Right. So let's say I have a. So I think the issue would be you have a page that does some conditional location.href in your history. Yeah, yeah. You back forward to it, and when you back forward to it, it in in some cases will location.href and those it won't. So in the cases it won't, or before that location.href actually happens. The navigation type would be back forward. Mm -hmm. Then, as soon as or in, if the location.href happens, then it becomes a navigate. So it doesn't become. It, it, it it, is. There is a new document, a new document loaded. that is navigate. Okay. Yeah, so then we don't need to change the spec at all. Then. I mean, um, what I'm sorry. Uh, we have to align with the delta thing, but yeah, I don't right, think but, that for redirected. I would assume there, that the spec will just fall out of. Right. Yeah. So for the location.href becoming a navigate, that should already yeah. be yeah. handled. The redirect well, is probably, like, we, I don't know where it is. We probably need to review the language of the spec yeah. and confirm the thing, because Boris doesn't usually open issues when the spec. Yeah, that is also true. <laughs> so my guess is he looked at the spec to see if it covered the case, and it he didn't see the language that covered the case, okay. so it might need. So, yeah, it probably needs clarification at least. Yeah, that's my guess. Okay. I think the redirect scenario is probably similar in that if you look at the spec, it says, "Hey, if the navigation is a blah," and then the question is, "Well, if it starts as a blah and ends in a blah, you know," and so the it's probably about being crisp about 
where in the, in the navigation. And that was the thing he was also getting at with his language in the issue, which is like, and actually probably navigation doesn't really talk about this. So if you, because this concept is only for service worker and navigation. Okay. Yeah, but it, it also it it makes time. more sense now even to, for this piece to be defined in HTML regarding the type. Right. And then, yeah, service worker, like, I don't know how service worker does that now, but like maybe there is already a definition there somewhere, but there's no need to define it twice. Yeah, for and sure. We should just hang. Yep. Place ourselves off of that. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, okay. Um, um, can you maybe sum that up in the uh, in the document? Can we thank or somewhere? Can try to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. And now that sums it up for navigation timing as far as stuff that we need to discuss. Um, now, regarding resource hints, so we said that we need to split resource hints. So, this is an issue that is probably most relevant to. Uh, like most relevant, relevant to the prefetch uh, hint. Uh, but generally, uh, we have an open issue and an ongoing discussion regarding uh, prefetch and double key caching. Um, basically, some browsers uh, already double key their cache in ways that are not necessarily strictly defined. And there is an effort going on, I believe, in fetch to define what that actually means and what the keys should be and what should be the OK. Um, but in that world of double key caches, uh, prefetch is implemented today enables to bypass a bunch of protections because it is <coughs> fetches that are triggered by <coughs> potentially one origin and use so cross origin prefetch is uh, potentially bypassing those protections because those are fetches that are triggered by one origin and then consumed by another. Um, so we had a discussion last year uh, to basically um, modify prefetch in ways that it's only relevant for uh, navigation, um, only relevant relevant for navigation requests, only reusable by navigation requests, uh, omitted credentials or same origin credentials. It doesn't really uh, uh, no refer. A manual redirects, bypasses service worker, a bunch of various restrictions, uh, which they are not like it's been ongoing discussion, but eventually Anna um, asked four days ago a very relevant question uh, where he wonders if a new keyword wouldn't be appropriate given that it's it would be something like the new and revamped and privacy safe prefetch would be something that is very different from what is shipped today in Chromium and I believe also in Firefox. Um, could be like implication that current pref like we would deprecate current prefetch. Potentially. Um, <coughs> yes, this is this is the concern that if we will. So we initially talked about using as document as a way to distinguish those navigation uh, from non-navigation requests. But then the 
document only uh, without like so add an admit credentials or same origin credentials more like the okay. uh, so we could add a bunch of attributes that make it so that current like in user agents that only support this new mode old prefetches won't do anything or we could mint a new keyword that right. um, you know this is the new privacy safe prefetch um, and it will be potentially simpler for people to given the understand the very different semantics I would probably hear on the side of the new keyword because there is some existing there's lots of existing discussions recommendations on user prefetch and this is going to be very different yes and I also suspect that it would be very hard to explain to people a why the old thing is no longer working and b why they have to add all these you know as document and cross origin and blah 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 um like yeah, yeah. The, the, it would be very hard to convince people to do that people will shoot themselves in the foot and make the, a new so you're saying that like in order for a content author to use this they would have to put all these all these things on it and if, of... if we keep the prefetch keyword yes they will have to jump through at least two hoops in order to make it work i know that with preloaded fonts just the, the cross origin one is a hoop that well, not 50 percent of the people so fall necessarily into. right you could just restrict prefetch to imply all these things but i think the problem with that but that just that's just that. yeah I, but but prefetch is a speculative thing. Like we can handle with this enough, but I think it would still confuse people. No, but also were... there is existing content today out there that prefetches images, so they will continue to prefetch that image, and it will never be reused by anything. It will be a a, a wasteful. Good point. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, we call it pre-navigate. We could come. That's not bad. Because the intent of um, allowing free anything with double key caching is that basically the only use case for it would be a mainframe navigation to have its main resource. Uh, but beyond that, this the only use case that we can allow. Yeah. Beyond that, the current web page should not be able to influence the future web page at all. <laughs> like it. Should it? Okay. okay. Anyone with strong opinions? Okay. Cool. Done. Can you please tag Eric on this one? Um, sure. Let me get his get I'm sorry, I just realized that's it. I think it's Eric Law. I think so too. I don't know if we and it depends on which group yeah. on GitHub right now. Because he doesn't magically appear when I add Eric Law. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can add them. But Thankfully, I think the um, W3C folks are the folks who have to. Alex, do you want credit? If so, what's your username? I invented pre navigate. A Christensen 07. Okay. Yes. This was that. 07. Yep. Yep. I don't think Eric is part of the W3C or team to get him to join. I don't know. Oh. Um.
We're bugging another Eric. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, thanks. And last before, yeah, this is going faster than predicted. Uh, so we have an issue for long tasks uh, where Ryosuke, um, yeah, um, basically saying that having multiple uh, contexts or exposing long tasks of cross origin iframes seems like a bad idea. And I don't know. Like, do you um, there's multiple context cross origin entries necessarily? Yeah. Yeah, I remember the game this six months ago. I don't remember because we have. Uh, okay, let's look at the. There's various system writing libraries, and I have, yeah, that includes the case where there's multiple same origin sharing the uh, contact. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I think the underlying issue is that there's, long tasks right now doesn't really have an active editor. That's, yeah. yeah. But so um, there, there's categories in this spectrum unknown. The long test version is yes. involved in multiple browsing contexts. Yeah. yeah, so so uh, an example would be same origin ancestor and same origin descendant. Both okay. of those were participated in the long test, so we would consider it multiple contexts. Right. Okay. I think so. um, okay. Um, so, in, in other words, is the combination of same origins of different types that turns it into multiple contexts. Yeah. So it turns off this is already covered. Does the spec make that? Okay. No. Make that clear. So, I, I don't think the spec is sufficiently clear. It's also unclear to me if multiple contexts is the right approach here, or whether we're doing some kind of like bit mass sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so what? What like actually reading the issue that Briosky posted is that. Uh, because we cannot expose cross origin iframes, and multiple contexts is necessarily same origin iframes, and the script can simply look at attribution to conclude the same bit of information. So right. the multiple context um, type or whatnot doesn't make sense. And I was wrong. It does. The spec does explicitly state that it involves multiple browsing. Uh, what about browsing context, but it doesn't say that they're false. Right, right, okay, yeah. So it could be multiple same origin yeah. browsing contexts. Yeah. So what's the problem then? Um, it's not actually a problem. Uh, so that I, I think I misunderstood when I said this is something that we need to discuss. Maybe we can drop multiple contexts as a type because it gives you information you already have elsewhere. That's the that's the issue. But it's not something that seems right worthy of discussion. That's just generally whenever long tasks will get an active editor, that would be something to clean up. I guess the question is, if we aren't returning multiple contexts in that case, what is it that we should return? Like Rizuki is right, the script can just look at attribution and for their multiple frames involved, but we still have to return some value. That, okay, that sounds like a good question to ask on the issue. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and
and with that, we're about an hour ahead of time uh, because we wanted to go over a bunch of reporting related issues with Ian. Maybe, um, should we, is there a break? Uh, we should, yeah, we haven't scheduled a break, but we probably should have. Um, so maybe we can schedule a break now for what time is the break session? Hmm? What time is the break session? I think it's now. Do they have snacks? That's <laughs> what's <laughs> the question. I think it's now. Three to four. Three to four. So that sounds like a good time. Good time to take a break. And we'll reconvene at um, like maybe even four if we don't have the end before then. Or do we want to discuss some other there are other issues? Um, like the issue list that I have is exhausted. Uh, other than like maybe I um, we can. I don't know that we have any issues. I think we have about five people in the room who probably could crank two or. I, I know it's just work, but if we just so, spent a couple of hours just. On a couple of PRs, at least for the full four after our So maybe we can say that <laughs> we reconvene the session at 4 p.m. Uh -huh. and people who are interested in pushing through some PRs or CLs, yeah, between uh, can yeah come back early. early. Then can come back early and we'll do a short working session and divide work that way. Does that work? Yeah. Cool. That's all right. Hmm.